Hello. Um, this is an extension to the lecture from Tuesday. Um, I have copied the code into the Git repository on GitHub. So there is a URL provided at the beginning of the of the video. Um, all all the code is here. It's the at currently at the state which we left it in the class. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to change the way we store students. So then instead of referencing them by um, in these indexes in the array, uh, which is a little bit inflexible, I would like to store them uh, by some form of ID that it's managed by the client side. So each student will be given sort of unique ID. Uh, and then in our URL, uh, what we can say is we can say uh, localhost student and then instead of using 0, 1 and so on as we've done for the first iteration we will have some sort of a string which is the unique ID of the students uh, and if a student with the given ID exists we will return it if it doesn't exist we will um, return not found so same as we're doing with the indices but without the numerical uh, indexing of, the, of our students. Why is that? Well, um, the order in which we add students now uh, creates the order in which the student indexes are done. And that's it, it's a little bit inflexible. So to achieve this, instead of using a slice for our students, um, what we can do is we can uh, change the underlying data structure to use a map instead. So we will modify slightly our test um, to uh, the way we are reading the students instead of using an integer index, we'll use a string ID. Um, one thing that uh, we have in the main is the actual structure for the student type. So I will move it to the students um, students file. So we'll move it from here and we'll move it to here. Um, <clears throat> and as I said, we will introduce a unique ID, which will be unique ID, which would be a string and we will um, we will use JSON ID for this. So our student currently will have three fields, one of which is the ID. Uh, we will modify the the storage. So instead of using a slice, we will say we have students is a map, which maps a string which is the unique ID of a student into the actual instance of a student. Um, and now we can add new student in and we just say students um, student of s dot id equals the student um, counting the number of entries stays the same and if instead of getting a student by index uh, which we don't have anymore we'll get a student by key which is a string and the key or the key id let's say um we will change this to say <clears throat> we have the student s okay from db students and then we read the key id so what it does it returns as a student if it exists, 
if it doesn't exist in a current map it will the okay will fail so we can check if okay um, then we will return return s uh, else we actually haven't found the student so um, we have to handle somehow the situation where the student doesn't exist uh, we can propagate the OK outside to the Koli so we can um, say there is a bool returned in which case we basically can return straight the map return right so if we um, have a student the bull will uh, okay let's check that okay so um, we have to we, we cannot um, return two values in a single single line we have to split it into two lines so we have to get the student and the boolean ok value and then return uh, return them like this so we basically propagate um, the um, ok value for checking if the map key exists so this basically returns true with the value if the value exists and false an empty value if the value doesn't exist so then whoever uses our api can basically use the same uh, semantics as accessing the the map um, so we have to modify the tests now because the tests will fail uh, or actually will probably not compile correctly so we see here that um, our constructor for student expects uh, three parameters so we have to say uh, Tom will have say ID one and then for testing multiple let's say ID zero ID one and ID two so now we have um, three students, ID 0, ID 1, and ID 2, with our particular, uh, particular names. And we can see um, so our students DB um, range goes through the keys now so instead of returning an index uh, we are returning a key for that particular um, map entry so to make the test um, so in here what we would do is we would change that to map as well so let's say it's a map which maps the string to a student and we would like to initiate it with um, id 0 student um, actually it will be like this um, so it's a string which maps our ID to a student. So let's say ID one, that would be Alice and ID two, that would be Samantha. And we are a test data is a map. Oh yeah, we have to say it's a map. 
uh, between strings and students. Okay, so this is sorted. Uh, so now what we can do is we can say um, we have the keys and we will say get me uh, a particular student and it returns yeah because it returns now the the student and the okay value we cannot really do this um, in a single line so what we can do is we can say get me a student s which will give me the student uh, and we don't care if it was okay or not and then if s name is the same as the key name from our map then I mean if it's not the same name then we have a problem um, so same as with this one liner this one doesn't um, well we have to say the the student test data so we say as test underscore equals this right so what happens now is we are from the test data map we getting the key which is the same and then we um, checking if the s name is different than the s test name and if it is different then we have a wrong name and the same we have to do for h and in fact for id2 so let's rewrite that so what we can do is we can copy that again we say um, we already have we already have students so what we can do is we can ask if s uh, h is the same as s test h and if it is different then that we have an error and if s id is different then s test id then again we have a problem so we will say test error that um, ids do not match all right so now we have the uh, we have to check for the okay here there is still one small problem somewhere. Um, we getting key. So the key here is, um, it would be nice if we could store the sample data in an instance. So we say um, as data. So let's say as data is a student with those properties so then we can basically say as data id all right it looks good uh, we have the green tick so it should run let's run the tests okay we have um, some problems in main uh, yes, because we have the handler which returns the student. So now instead of uh, returning the um, index, integer index, we should be using the strings instead. So let's go back to our logic. Uh, we have been converting um, the, the last part of the request into the integer. We don't need to do that anymore because um, a string is 
all we need. So the actual um, index, the, the key for each student is the, is the string. So we can safely pass the string which is passed inside the, um, the URL. So parts two uh, is the string value for the final part of the URL. So here we have um, student and then there'll be ID zero, for example. So reply with student should take uh, index, which is the ID, which is a string. And if the ID is a string, we just say ID here because this gives us the student and oops and the value okay we have to um, change that uh, and we checking if the um, if the the ID is correct so instead of checking the actual index in the array what we need to do is we basically have to get a student uh, and the value okay um, for this and then if if not okay if the the key doesn't exist we say not found and then if it does exist we say uh, we pass s back so we are guaranteed here that s is not empty because if okay is true this will not trigger so we have this sorted uh, there is one more problem somewhere Let's check that. Um, the problem is we not using string conversions anymore. So we can safely delete that. All right, so uh, let's run our test again. Let's see if everything, no, it's still not a problem. Um, we are trying to assign to a, to an empty uh, map. So our map um, in here, uh, yeah, not here, we have to go to our code. So in students, we are assigning S to a map which has not been uh, initialized. So in a sense, what we have to do is we have to um, initialize the, the student, student map. Um, and we do that by um, saying, for example, yeah, let's make a initialize, let's make a function called um, init. So, And this function will specify that db students is actually a map from string to a student. Need to initialize our uh, so we say in it. And here we also will say in it. All right, let's check it. And we have the situation that our two tests, the original tests pass correctly. So now we have um, a server. If we run, if we run it, let's try it. Okay. We're running the server and if I go to students, I'm getting an empty array. Uh, there are no students in, in the database. So let's, um, yeah, to make it a little bit more interesting, let's put um, when we say Yeah, um, the problem is that the handler is um, 
this variable is being initialized every single time the handler is being called. So we can't really populate the uh, the database here because you know it's recreated every time we're making a new call. Um, so for testing purposes, of course, we can say uh, db init and we can say db at student. Um, so let's say Tom 21 and we say ID zero. We can do that. Um, so let's stop it and rerun it. So now if we ask for ID zero, we should get Tom. Yes, we are getting Tom back. If we ask for something else, we should get not found because we don't have a student with that ID. Um, so the system is working. This is not good here. Uh, we need to move it somewhere outside where this method can access the, the database. So, um, Let's yeah, let's move it to a global global space for now. So let's say variable db student db and then uh, we will initial initialize it. Um And main. Okay, so we have this kind of a global global variable. Okay. No problems. Let's run it again. All right, and test not found. And with ID zero, Tom is back. Perfect. So we've transformed the index-based integer-based indexing into our data database into a more flexible. Um, ID based, string based, and the IDs are part of the student identity. Uh, we have changed the um, the local uh, storage inside the method to be outside, so we don't lose the context every time this handler is being called by our requests. Uh, and we have some dummy data which we actually don't need. Uh, we will handle the post respond, uh, uh, request here by injecting the new um, new student into the database. So that's our next task. All right, so let's uh, try to um, implement the post handler. Um, before we do that, um, I was mentioning in the in the class that we it would be nice if we have this kind of uh, tidied up so we handle the uh, post and get and everything else in a kind of a default uh, default way so perhaps we can rewrite it f into a, uh, a switch statement so let's switch on our method and then if we have the post um, condition we will do certain things um, and if we have um, if we have uh, case get we will do something else and then if we have the default default case we uh, send the 
then on the implemented thing, right? So now we remove this, and then this is our snippet for handling the get part. So in fact, we don't need that. I think we don't need that neither. Great, so, whoops. We need that in, in the get part. All right, so it's a little bit cleaner now and we have, um, we handling properly the default case that we are saying, okay, if you're doing delete at the moment, it's not implemented yet. But for post, what we would like to do is we would like to get the student, which is being passed inside the request. So first we have to check if the request body is not empty. So if the request body is, um, is empty, then we have to say, well, you probably malform the post. Um, so we don't expect posts to be with, uh, with an empty body. So we say HTTP error and we say um, uh, student post request must have JSON body. And we may say HTTP status um, status. Uh, let's use bad request, maybe. Okay. So this is one potential error condition. The second one, if uh, we have to do the JSON new decoder. Um, we reading from the decoder and we want to decode into our student, right? So let's create a variable, variable student, um, which is of type, yeah, let's be a bit succinct. So let's say yes, student. And we want to pass the encoded um, value into the into S, but um, yeah, let's see what the decode method returns. So if I go uh, go along JSON um, decode. Yeah, JSON package, and then we have the decoder, and the decoder has a decode method, and it basically returns an error if um, if something went wrong. So we will receive the error if the decoding was incorrect, and then we can do something with the with the error. Um, so we can say HTTP error uh, W error and again we probably respond with status bad request. Uh, we have to get um, the uh, string value out of the error so we say error okay um new decoder uh, used as value let's see Mm. 
okay we have json uh we're missing something here so what we are missing yeah let's just check uh, check the code let's see some example okay so for example and here we will yeah so that's the encoding the decoding oh yes we uh we passing r which in fact we are not decoding r we decoding the content of the of the body so what else That should work. So we we need to if error is different than nil. So we basically have to make a conditional check. Uh, we cannot check on value. Um, so we comparing error to nil uh, and then saying okay the decoding didn't work out. If the decoding worked um, and we got um, we got to here, then we basically have a content of the student inside S. So if someone was posting as a new student, we have a new new student value. So now we have a choice because our database may already have, uh, let's say, someone passed us a student with ID zero. Um, our student may already exist. So the idiomatic way to handle post would be to throw an error saying, well, if you want to modify an existing student, you should use put, you shouldn't use post. Um, and if the student doesn't exist, then we, um, we can insert a new student into a database. So what we will do, we will check, um, check if the student is new uh, and if the student already exists we will handle that error again uh, as an error condition so we say uh, let's find uh, existing student uh, okay uh, in fact we don't need to know what the existing student is we just need to find the value of okay um, so we will say db students um actually we say db get um and now with the new student we have the id so we say if the student if the student exists uh in our database that's the error condition so we will say mm, student already exists use put to modify okay and we need uh, yeah let's let's leave bad request for now but we can uh, make a note to ourselves here uh, so find a better error code status HTTP status so we're using bad request but maybe there is a better way of handling that particular case so if if someone posts as a student which already exists I mean we're checking it by ID we reply that so now um, new student we are sure that the ID doesn't exist. We have a new student. So what we do, we just add the student into the uh, into our storage. Uh, we kind of keep it in memory at the moment as a global uh, global map, but that that's fine. So um, at this point, we basically can close and we will send an empty body um, back to the caller 
Again, there are some conventions. Um, one of the conventions is that we will return a newly added um, entry back to the caller, uh, which we which we can do, um, or we can just acknowledge that it the new student was inserted. If we were to get a student without an ID, we we here we kind of assuming the student ID exists, so we we got. Um, um, a student with the ID passed in. Uh, sometimes the backend, the, your server will generate new ID for new entities that you're storing. In which case, it would be nice to return an entry like a student or an entity back to whoever called us with the ID filled in. But the, our caller already knows the ID. So here, what we basically can do, we can say, um, we can f uh, print. Um, we can basically print OK uh, f back to the caller and uh, close the uh, close the connection with the OK. So the default this line will initiate the header. The header will have the plain text as the uh, status type, uh, the content type. And then it will have a text saying OK. So it, it will send uh, 200 by default. Um, and we will send um, OK as a response. It, again, it's up to the, to, to the agreement, to, to the contract between the API, what you expect to get back. In our case, it sort of doesn't make sense to send S back because the client already knows S. It's like all the fields are filled in. So that I think makes sense in the current context. So it looks okay. What we can do is we can um, um, we can test it. Uh, so let's see what's the problem here. Ah oh, yes, uh, we need to say we're printing it to W. And let's try. We're running it. So now what we can do is we have, um, yeah, well, let's start, let's start a postman. Because I need to test post request. Um, so what we will do is we have uh, in fact, we were trying it today before. So we have a post where we specify the content type as, as JSON. We've specified the... Um, so currently our database is empty. So if I ask for ID 0, it's not found. And then if I ask for all students, uh, I'm actually getting an empty student again. So there is something not quite right with our um, our response for all the students. But let's uh, let's not fix it for now. Let's test if adding a new student works. So I will say I have a new student whose ID is ID zero, and it's Tom twenty one. Um, so if I send this request in. Uh, let me see what I got back. I got back 200. Okay, so it looks as if the student Tom has been added. So if I go, um, if I go now and ask for all the students, I'm getting ID zero with Tom. I'm actually getting a, a map back. Yeah, that's true. So. Um, we will have to modify that because our data structure is a map which maps IDs to instances. So if I say, give me everything, it kind of gives me uh, IDs and the students. What we would like to get is an array of students. So we will change that, but let's add another student with, with the postman. So um, I will add um, Anna who is uh, 25, whose ID is ID one, I will send that. I again got okay, okay. So now if I say, give me all the students, I should get two. 
and indeed I have ID 0 which is Tom and ID 1 which is Anna uh, I can ask for a specific student I can ask for ID 1 and I should get Anna and I can ask for ID 0 and I should get Tom so everything is working apart from the fact that when I ask for all the students I get all the students as a map um, so we need to we need to modify that so uh, what we will do we will stop the server for now and we will see how we handling returning all the students so all the students are returned here and we're checking if our map is nil we return an empty um, slice so it's an empty array in a sense uh, and then if students are not nil we return them which in our case is a map right so instead of returning a map what I really need is I need um, to return an array of all the students uh, instead of returning the the map so we yeah we need to convert a map into into an array so let's let's google that let's check how we can do that uh, in go uh, golang uh, convert map to array uh, I, in fact it can be a slice is there a nice way of getting a slice value from a map that's exactly what we need um, so here is a question we have a map and then we can of course iterate over the um, the values of the map and create an array but is there a nicer way to do that um, so we can right so there seem not to be um, an easy way at least in this question um, to do that we have to basically iterate over all the entries and append the values from the map into our into our uh, slice in this case right um, so well let's do that um, we need to change that else close slightly so what we will do is um, we will say we have a we have an a, a array which is actually a slice in our case which will be a slice over students which will have nothing initially but it will be of capacity of our map so we say uh, db students uh, and then we will say for every student in our um, yeah actually we need to have so there will be a key student and range of db students what we need is we don't need the key so we say append um, to the slice a append s um, and we say a equals um, the new uh, appended um, slice so now we have um, a slice which contains all our students instead of a map which contains all our students so let's test this now uh, we run it it works we go to our query for all the students um, well we rerun the uh, the server so what happens is we will have an empty array right we have to do the posts uh, with the postman again so of course our data is non-persistent 
we have um, we store the students in memory so every time we restart the server so I've just added Anna it went okay and let me find where we've been adding Tom um, let's see here is Tom but I need Tom with the yeah with the ID so I, I add Tom as well so now if I rerun this I will have two um, students and now we have a JSON array which contains two students because I already have an ID inside the, the, the instance of the student so I don't need to have the map structure it's much cleaner to return an array of objects uh, as, a, as a result for the kind of a, a query like this and of course ID 0 will return us uh, Tom even though we've added Tom second, right? The order doesn't matter in which we add the elements now. All right, so we um, we managed to get uh, the implementation of post sorted, uh, but we are doing the posts uh, manually using the postman. What we will do next is we will write a client which will do it for us. But before we do that, uh, what we will do first is I don't like this manual testing. I don't like the fact that I actually have to add those two students to test that the behavior is correct, right? Uh, and if I stop the server and restarted it, now, um, you know, the students are not there. So ID zero returns, uh, you know, not, not found. And then all students return me an empty array. Uh, and I kind of don't like this manual testing. It, uh, takes time and it's error prone and I have to you know do work by adding students what I would like to do instead is to have a small test case which tests this functionality which I already expect to to have and this functionality to work correctly uh, to be tested automatically so what instead of writing a client first what we will do we will write a client in a test case uh, which will allow us to um, to automat automat uh, to make the testing automatic uh, that we can um, rerun the test at will uh, just by pressing the testing uh, button like this. We currently have only two tests and we don't test the functionality of the handlers which we have for the HTTP request response. We don't know if the handling for put for example returns correctly uh, not implemented, right? We would expect the status not implemented, but to test it, I have to go to the postman uh, and I have to say, I'm actually trying to put, to modify age of Tom um, and I'm issuing the same ID again. Uh, so what will happen? Uh, well, actually I'm not running the, the server. So first we have to start the server. Um, not the tests, the actual binary. Okay, so server is running. If I send this, okay, it works. I got a 501 not implemented yet. Um, that's correct, but again, I had to manually test it. And then if I try to do the post, uh, that should work. It's okay. And now if I do, if I send Tom again with the same ID, right? What I expect, I expect uh, bad request because I'm trying to modify a student which already exists. So let's test that. Okay, student already exists, use put to modify. Well, it works fine. But again, I'm doing all of this testing manually. Um, so let's automate this. Okay, so let's start the final part of this tutorial. And what we will do is we will extend our test cases uh, to include tests for our main root handlers. So in our main, uh, we have a number of root handlers. We have the handler for hello, and then we have um, a little bit of logic to handle the slash student requests for our REST API to interrogate and insert new students. What we will do is 
we will change the structure a little bit. So we'll, let's create ourselves a new file called API student. And let's refactor our main. Um, uh, IntelliJ allows you to automatically add new files into the Git uh, repository. I will I will handle Git with command line later, so I say no here. Um, so we'll have a main um, file for our API to handle the student requests, and we also would like to have a new file for testing it. So we will follow the same naming conventions as before, and we will have um, a file called API student go with the logic and API student test with the tests. So in here, we will copy and paste all the logic which relates to handling students. So we have this function and reply with student and the function which uh, is like a dispatch for us. Um, so we take all those three functions, we copy that and cut it from here. And we will not need the JSON encoding anymore in this file. So what's left uh, is the handler for hello and our registrations with the with the server and initialization of the in-memory database. And we have it as a global variable here. So what we will do with the student API for the rest, we will just move it here. So those three functions will be moved here and IntelliJ imports the necessary import automatically. So now we have the reply with all the students, reply with a single student and that kind of a dispatch mechanism for handling our post and get requests. The default behavior is we, we specify not implemented for, you know, delete and put another uh, REST API calls methods that we don't currently handle. We only handle post and get. So to start, let's, um, uh, before we start, there is a uh, there is a case which we haven't implemented it yet, which is the if the URL is ma malformed, uh, it basically currently silently responds with OK and empty body uh, because we're not handling the error. Uh, we pretty much return in in this flow here, uh, which means there will be an empty body because we're not putting anything into the uh, response writer and we're not throwing any exceptions or anything. So the default header is with the okay. So what we can do is we will handle the error condition a little bit differently. And let's say we will reply with um, bad request. So if the URL is malformed, instead of um, instead of silently failing with OK, we will uh, pass um, bad request. And here we, uh, we can say uh, malformed URL. Uh, so if our get request is not following the expected, so the expected uh, URL is of the form student and then optional uh, ID, right? So it's either slash student slash or slash student slash ID. Uh, if the URL is not formatted this way, uh, we will basically say we have a malformed URL. All right, so let's um, let's continue. Um, so we have refactored the main, we took some of the methods from here and we've put, we have put them into the API student. Uh, and we also uh, implemented the API student um, um, error handler. So it's kind of a good 
good idea to basically commit that to Git repository. Um, I, as, uh, as announced before, there is a repository which holds this uh, code base. Um, so I can check the status and it says main go is modified and we have two new files. Uh, so what I will do is I will add git at uh, rp student and I will also git at uh, main main go and I will commit the current changes so I will say git commit um, refactoring the main moving student calls to set Wow. All right. So this way we kind of keep track of the of the changes that we do. If I say git status now, we'll see that we only have um, API student test um, not added to the repository because we haven't really implemented it yet. So, okay. So let's go to our test. Um, <clears throat> and as with the other test, um file we basically need some test cases test uh, functions so let's create our first one um let's call it test um and now what we will be testing is what we have inside this file so we have three methods one called reply with students one called reply with student um so all students single student and then we have a handler which dispatches the post and get and anything else. So let's focus on the final default. So let's write a simple test which will try to delete something and we will see if the proper status not implemented is returned for us. So how can we do that? Um, so we will call it a student, actually it's called handler student and then we will test the not implemented functionality we need the reference to testing team and what we will what we will do we need um, to do basically four things uh, the first thing is we need to instantiate instant uh, instantiate a mock HTTP server. We don't want to be testing our real server. We need to have, you know, a mocked server that is only used for testing. It, it will not actually be listening on the port 8080 or any other port uh, while the tests are running. It will be just for the purpose of tests. So we'll have a mock HTTP server and then we have to uh, register our um, handler student. So then the actual logic of the handler is tested with the mocked server. So we will use our real function, but on a kind of fake HTTP server. The, the third thing that we need to do is we need to create a request to our mock HTTP server. So we basically, in our case, we will kind of create delete request. And then the final thing that we, um, so in our case, it means to create delete request. Um, and then the fourth thing that we need to do is we need to check if the response from the handler is what we expect. So at the end, we need to check, for example, um, you know, we will test if the response uh, status code is different, if the response status code is different to HTTP status not uh, implemented we will say that we have a problem. So we will say t error um, 
expected uh, yeah let's say that expected status code D received receive D and then we say HTTP status uh, we will close the quote here status not implemented and we will get response status code All right so we will do some tests um, and then if the tests fail we will uh, co cause the testing framework to, to uh, fail for us so how we do the first three things so the final thing we've already done we expect delete to respond with uh, not implemented um, how do we mock the server and how do we register uh, our handler it is actually quite straightforward we need a testing server and uh, we will use the HTTP test package instead of HTTP and there is a call uh, called new server so we will use that and in here we have to pass the handler the actual HTTP uh, handler and our so we, we have a method called uh, handler student and uh, API student, you know, handler student, which takes response writer and a request. Um, but this function itself doesn't actually implement the handler interface. We need to wrap this function into uh, an interface so then it can be passed to the uh, to the new server and we do that simply by uh, calling HTTP handler uh, handler func and passing the function to it the one which takes the response writer and the request as parameters so now we basically have created a new server, a new mock server, which is using our real handler student to respond to the requests which are issued to that server. Uh, we would like to close it at the end. So what we will do, we will call uh, defer close so we don't forget that the test server needs to be closed at the end of the test. So this line of code basically uh, instantiates the mock server and registers our handler student. Um, okay, so what's left to for the test to actually work is we need to um, create a request. Uh, the HTTP get request and post requests are part of the API on the HTTP uh, uh, package but if we were to call delete there is no delete uh, method we actually have to manually call um, the delete method on the on the client so we actually have to do two things we have to instantiate the client um, and we do that simply by calling HTTP client and we need to actually instantiate the request and this one we do by calling HTTP um, new request and then we specify the method of this request in our case it will be delete and we have to specify the URL on which that request will be called and optionally the body so what we want to pass to this request in our case because we're just testing delete uh, if the actual method works we can pass an empty body so we can put nil as the third parameter um, 
So let's use this method. And what we will do is we will call uh, method delete. As a third parameter, as we discussed, we can pass nil because we don't need anybody. And then for the URL, uh, what we will use, we will use the server uh, URL, um, which is the string. But um, this is just the URL to the server. It doesn't have um, any, um, so, so it, it is kind of an equivalent to, to slash, right? Um, which in our case is all, all we need. So we, um, we pass the method delete, the URL and an empty body. Um, the error which we have here suggests that we can expect two, param two return values, the error and the request. Um, if there was an error constructing the um, constructing the request, we have to break the, the test. So we will basically say, well, there is an error, um, error constructing the delete request. So, I mean, we, we can print the error um, as well to see a little bit more details, but that error should not happen. I mean, the, the call to create a new request should be successful. And then what we will do is we will um, call client do, and we will pass the reference to the request that we um, just got, right? So we will say do request uh, and we for convenience, um, yeah, let's, let's do this. Yeah, so actually this returns already a, a reference. So the pointer, so this do um, returns, um, response and potential error, right? So we can check if the execution of the, of the um, request caused some error. And then again, um, we break the test. We, we say, well, there was error making or executing the delete request. If there was no error executing it, we have the response um, from the conducting of the request. And then we checking the response status code as we are already implemented. So as you see, it's not super uh, complicated. Uh, we need a couple of lines to instantiate the server, uh, you know, one line. Uh, we need the, to make the request and then um, test what the request, you know, gives us back. And if the request is successful, in our case, it, re it responds with not implemented, um, the test passes, right? So we are testing if our handler student properly responds with not implemented for a delete request. So I hope it makes sense. In fact, what we could do is we could make those all the methods which the um, handler should respond with not implemented and call this in a loop and interrogate um, over and over again uh, our ser test server with various um, methods. Currently, we're doing it only for delete, but the same test should we should rewrite for put and for um, uh, other, you know, REST uh, HTTP methods that we would like to test. So there is a, a number of methods like, you know, head, patch, put, um, that we currently res responding with not implemented. Uh, but uh, for now, we only 
did it for delete. So let's test it. Um, let's run our test and hey, you see, uh, we have the non-implemented test case added to our tests and all the tests, you know, pass correctly and respond. Okay. Uh, we can make sure that this actually working by running uh, tests in the command line too. And we have uh, handler status not implemented passing, at student passing and multiple students passing. So all our tests pass fine. Uh, I will, because I'm already in the command line, what I will do is I will add this, um, this file to git. So I have uh, API student modified and I have the API student test edit. I will ask uh, what difference. So I will say git uh, diff uh, API student go. I would like to check what changed. Um, as far as I can tell, nothing changed. So for some reason, uh, maybe there was a space or something that got deleted. Uh, so we'll say git at api student test. So we'll add our, um, and add this file, but oops, git add git commit um, adding first route test for students happy. All right. Um, so we go back to the editor and we will write another test. Um, so currently we only testing the non implemented, which is the the default branch of our case statement for handler student. Let's test the get uh, the get part. So what we will do? We'll write another test. Um, so func uh, test handler student um, get all students. Right. So what we will test here is the We will test the call to get uh, slash student slash, right? Uh, so we will test the functionality of this. We've been doing it in a browser. So we've been uh, calling, uh, let me check. So uh, localhost. We've been calling student or student and testing if this is correct. Now we will automate that test. Uh, so as you remember, uh, if I do this call, uh, I have to run the server first. So if I run the server and make this call, I should get um, an empty array because the in-memory database is empty. We haven't added any students yet. I have a simple empty array. Okay. If I call it with some particular ID and I, this ID doesn't exist in the, uh, in our in-memory database, I'm getting not found. I'm getting a 404 specifying not found, but if I call it with empty, I, I get an empty array. Um, so let's, uh, have a test which gets the student, which should return us uh, an empty array, empty array back. We can have another test in which we will ask for all the students uh, after, after adding a uh, single Tom student back. Uh, if I ask for student and I've added Tom initially, right? So I may have uh, get all students Tom and get all students empty. 
use cases, right? So let's do empty first. Uh, we need basically the same as we had here. Uh, we need to instantiate a mock server. So we copy those two lines here and here. Um, we need to make our get request. As I said, when you're doing a get request, you can use a simplified um, call uh, instead of instantiating the client. Uh, you do that if you need to manipulate the header or if you need to make some unusual uh, you know, method. Uh, for get and post, you just use the standard API calls. So in our case, uh, here what we will do is we will say HTTP get and then pass the URL. Okay, so we get the URL by calling the server. Um, and get gives us the response and error if something went wrong. And we check if we have an error, then we break the test saying um, error making the get request. Uh, we don't know. We don't know what the error is. Again, it should not happen. Uh, and then we have to check, you know, we have to write our logic for the test, what we expect to get back. Uh, so one thing that we expect to get back is we want to uh, make sure that the response uh, status code is equal to status OK, right? So if it is not status OK, we have to complain. So we already wrote um, we already wrote a line like this, so we copy that. Uh, so we say if um, status OK is the expected one, uh, and if we got something else, we you know throw an error here. Um, if the status is not OK, we may basically break the test. Um, and then if the status is OK, we need to check what we got back. Uh, because, um, you know, if, some, if everything works fine, we should get an empty array of students. But we may get back whatever, like, because it may malfunction, right? So what we have to say is we want to get something back. And this something back, we actually don't know uh, what it is. So we basically will say it's, um, you know, A is of unknown type, a anything will do. Um, and we actually, well, we, we can make, um, we can make an assumption that we're getting back an array, right? So we're getting back an array of something. Uh, and then what we can do is we can test, um, we can test if we use the, um, JSON decoder, uh, and we pass the response body to it. Um, and we need to decode and we will be decoding into, into A. So if this decoding of the JSON response, we kind of assuming our get request will return a JSON response. If it doesn't, then we'll have an error. So we can basically test if the error is not nil. Uh, we have um, error parsing, parsing the expected JSON um, body. So, uh, and then we say what we got. Um, Uh, 
Interesting good error. Okay, uh, if there was no error um, and the actual um, decoding of A was successful, then what we really expect is we have to check if the length of A is different than zero because we really expect an empty um, error expect, expect, expected uh, empty array got so say A and we say error F um, and also what we can do is we can test if um, yeah, I mean, we cannot really distinguish an empty array. So an empty array uh, in JSON is an empty array. And if it is an array of ints or array of student, we cannot tell, right? Because it's just an empty array. We don't know what sort of type is associated with an empty array. Uh, we, if, the, if Tom was there, we know it's an array of students, but because we don't, you know, we don't have any elements from just from the JSON struct, uh, we can't tell. So that's all testing we can do in here. Um, so, okay, this is similar, but here we have to add new student. Um, and then we have to basically um, copy and paste from above. So we will reuse the, um, yeah, we kind of, but be before we do that, let's test the existing code. So let's check if this uh, properly works. So if we make a get request to our URL, uh, will we will get okay and will we will get the uh, an empty array? So let's run it. Okay, let's uh, stop the server and run the tests instead. Okay, so um, we have some problems. Um, so line 52 complains that um, yes yeah so we we use the wrong method um let's rerun it okay so what happens here is in line 47, uh, we expecting status 200, but we getting uh, 400. Why is that? Um, yeah, by the way, what is, what is 400? So let's say HTTP 400 and it's bad request, right? Okay, so instead of okay, we getting bad request. When do we send bad, bad request? Okay, it turns out that we sending bad request uh, for get in here, right? Uh, and in our test, we forgot that um, our handler expects a URL of certain you know, structure, and we didn't provide it that uh, because we just sent the URL to the server. So what we have to do is we have to add the slash student slash. Uh, now we have a properly formatted URL and we will not get 400. But it's kind of an interesting feature that we just found out that if we ask for an empty or malformed URL, then the server 
responds with 400 and that's what we should expect right so we can actually um, let's copy that quickly and let's have another uh, test case which will test handler and we call it malformed URL test and what we will do is we basically um, ask this um, and what we expect is status bad request right um, we will we don't need to do any parsing or anything and we basically making sure that if the URL is malformed our handler responds with a bad request properly um, so what we can do is we can uh, write it in a for loop so if I um, declare um, test cases and I say this is a array of string and one of the strings is this um, another is ts url plus something like student slash um, uh, id slash extra we don't expect extra we only expect student or student id right so that should also respond with a uh, malformed and then instead of doing that i will say uh, for uh, test case uh, or test string in a range of test cases please do this this and get string um, right and I don't need to use the index typo yeah it's okay so now we kind of iterate over and we're testing two malformed URLs one which is of the form of slash so it's like you know localhost slash uh, this should never happen because our if you go to main the router actually doesn't associate our handler with a root uh, slash right it associate with slash student um, but um, you know this test kind of checks if something is misconfigured uh, so in fact we can also add one more we can add one more in a form of let's say we are hooked up uh, yeah sorry this is not part of it um, oops this this and then we say something like um, what if we malform the initial part the the student uh, that should also respond with the malformed um, bad request right because in our specification we were um, requiring to only be responding to students slash student okay so yeah malform the urls test and we iterate over those three test cases in a loop and check if all of them re reply with status bad request um, we say for let's add for route and then we add the string expect status code status code 
bad request and we got the status code and we say uh, tstring so we Yeah, we also pass the route for which this, uh, so we say for route S, expected state status code bad request received this, right? Um, so let's test this. Uh, I don't want to test this one yet. So I will just uh, rename the, remove the test from the name. So we will not be testing those two we will only test these two, the not implemented and malformed URL. So let's run it. And we see uh, that for a stat, I was expecting 400, but I got 200, right? So this behaves as if everything is fine, as if I'm calling it with student. Um, because in our logic, we never actually test if the um, first parameter is student, right? Uh, we only testing if we have three parts and if we don't have three parts, we say bad request. So we kind of need to add, we need to fix that. Uh, and we need to add an extra test, which says, okay, if we have different than three parts, it's malformed, but if we do have three parts, um, and um, and parts one is different to student, then it's also malformed, right? So let's test this now. And we fix the bug, right? We had a bug that our uh, code would would res respond correctly to URLs which it shouldn't respond to. Now it doesn't. Now it sends a bad request if the uh, slash student, the student part is not called student. All right, so we found one bug by writing a test and we fixed it. Um, so let's go back to our test. Uh, so this test kind of, uh, so we, we had a bug here uh, because it was working fine as if it was called with student, but it shouldn't. Right, and now we can enable this test. So we can test if the um, empty um, request to an empty in memory store returns as an empty array, right? So let's run our tests and voila, it's all good. So, you know, we already know that because we've just tested it, that it returns what we expect. So no surprise that the test passes. It's just that we don't have to be doing that in the browser anymore. Our test suite handles that test for us. Um, so let's write one more, uh, which is we would like to respond um, with a single student, right? With Tom. Um, so how we do that? Well, uh, let's copy and paste the, the, um, the actual request so from here, we doing the, um, so we asking for all the students, um, if there is an error, okay, it's an error. Uh, we expect status, okay. We expect now to get not an interface, but we actually expect to get an array of student and it should have one student, right? Uh, so we decoding it. If there is a problem, we will throw the, an error. So the test will fail. And then we also say, okay, we expect uh, the length of, uh, of A to be one. Um, so expected array with one element got, we will see if we don't get one element. So now what, what's left is we need to add this new student. So as you know, uh, so as we go back to handler student, what happens here is we say reply with a student and we passing, um, we passing the, 
um, we're using the global variable called db, right? So somehow the db is kind of uh, accessed from the handler and then passed as a parameter to our reply with a student, right? And we could write um, a simpler test where we could uh, mock the, the db and check if this logic works correctly. So what we would do is we would uh, call this method with the response writer and with a mock of a db and with a particular id and check if it properly responds with the student that we are after. But if we're doing it from the handler, we kind of need to have this global db available, right? Uh, because the handler will will kind of use the globally accessible DB. Inside the test, um, we can, you know, um, instantiate DB. So we can say uh, DB is a student's DB and we will call DB init and we can say DB add and we say student um, Tom 21 ID zero. And now this DB is within the context um, of the um, of the of the test. We do that before the handler in, is instantiated. And hopefully it will um, it will work, right? So let's test it. Let's test that it actually works. Um, so in here it says we were expecting um, an array of one element, we got an empty array, right? So in fact, um, we haven't got the, the student, um, this DB um, has not been passed to the handler. We can, we can uh, instantiate it and we can access it, uh, but we cannot, we're not supposed to overwrite it, right? So we basically have to use, like if, if I do this, I'm, I'm redeclaring db. I, I want to use the global db instead. Okay, so let's run the test and let's see. Voila, we, it seems to work fine. Uh, let's make sure that what we get, so if, if we check if uh, a of zero, um, name is different to and now again it, it's useful if we have the test student equals we do this test student whoops Oopsie. Parts one is different than student. Okay, where is our test? Test got closed here. So we say a uh, student Tom twenty one. ID zero. All right. So we instantiating at a student, we adding it. And here we are saying, if the name of what we get is different to test student name, or if the age of what we getting is different to test student age, or if the 
um, ID of what we're getting is different to test student ID. We complain, we test error uh, students do not match got and we say oops um, a0 and test student was the expected so we say got s expected Yes. All right. So we double check that what we got from the request is really the student that we have in a database, right? So again, let's rerun the tests. It works fine. So the student which we got from the request is the student that we have in the database right now. All right. So there is one small thing left for us to do is to test the post, right? Uh, because when the API, instead of getting, oh yeah, we can test also if we're getting the correct student, if we ask for him. Uh, so um, let's write another. Um, yeah, what we actually can do is we can, yeah, it's cleaner if we write a new function. So let's copy that. Uh, we will have one more test case. We say test handler student get student. So we'll get a single student Tom uh, and we are not making the, so we're not making the request get student, but we getting get student ID zero. Okay. So what we do is we again instantiate our Tom, the ID is ID zero. Uh, we uh, have our mock server and here we asking for ID zero. Okay. We actually asking for that particular student. Um, so we, if there is an error, we, we complain if, if status is different than okay, we complain. We actually expect student now. We don't um, expect an array. We expect a single student back, right? Uh, so we decode it. If there is an error parsing the JSON, we complain. Uh, it's not an array. Uh, so we just check if our student that we got back is indeed Tom. Um, it's all good. Let's uh, add. So this is the the actual test for Tom. Uh, we will add because I don't want to make a new completely new function. I just want to test if we get not found for the you for the test case where we asking for say id1 right if i ask student id1 i don't have any student id1 in my in memory database i should get back what not found right i should have not found uh, so i'm expecting not found and that's what i got so we've added this um extra yeah six lines or so to test if we are asking for something which is not in our database, if we are correctly getting not found. If we are asking for something that is in our database, uh, which is ID zero, we are checking if we getting Tom back. So let's run this. Um, oh yeah, we have this problem here. Okay, let's rerun it. Perfect. It all works fine. So we are we have tested that uh, asking for a single student that is in our database also works fine, and asking for something that it doesn't exist in database returns not found. Uh, 
So we pretty much covered all the manual testing that we've done in the past. So all those tests with, you know, uh, ID zero, ID one, uh, all the manual tests that we were running before and interrogating our API that it works correctly are now fully automated. Uh, we just press a button and we know that the logic of the server is correctly uh, behaving. One thing left is the post. Um, so in the API student, we have the get kind of handled with all students and with a single student. We only need to test if the post correctly adds a student into the storage, right? So how we can do that? Same as with all those other tests, we need to write a function uh, which will post um, a new um, student in the post request. So what we will do is we will go to the bottom of the file and we'll say we have another function, which is our new test. And we testing handler student uh, with the post. And we need to um, instantiate the mock server again uh, at our handler. So we do the same as before. Okay. And now we need to make a request, which is a post request. So let's say we're doing post. And post takes um, three things. It takes the URL, um, the content type, and the actual body of what is being passed into the into the test right um, so let's do that we need um, we need the ts uh, url plus student um, in fact again our implementation is partially buggy because our handler so our uh, student um, handler actually doesn't care if the URL path passed to this logic is correctly formatted. Okay, so it relies on the on this line of code to make sure that it only will get post requests with this uh, student prefix, right? But uh, it will correctly handle posts to student, uh, posts to empty, uh, if it just happened that it's routed this way, and also student uh, and then ID zero, and also other things, right? We don't actually do any tests. Uh, we should, but we not. Uh, I'm not going to write a test which will fail for, for this type of uh, post uh, requests, uh, but we can kind of, you know, we're relying on this, which will handle the student. But if we pass something, if we pass something extra, so if I say student slash, you know, ID zero, and I'm actually passing, I'm doing post for ID one, uh, it will still work for ID one, even though the URL is malformed. Uh, we should technically have um, an extra test for this, but um, for simplicity, we will skip that. So uh, I am doing this, but I technically don't need to do that. It will work fine if, even if I just pass the URL, right? Um, but for consistency sake, I just say uh, slash student slash. Okay, so we need to pass um, the second parameter is the content type. So in our case, it's application JSON. And then we need to actually pass the, the writer, right? We need to serialize our student so we can post it to the handler. Okay. So how we would do that? Um, 
we have to have um, uh, JSON new encoder and that's the writer so we are having a variable w which is the io writer and we will pass w here and then we need to encode and we are encoding tom so let's say we have tom to be encoded and we are encoding in, into the writer and then if i can pass the writer here um i'm kind of um yeah so we need to convert something um that the this post can read from right uh we're not actually uh, writing here we passing something that um, the post can can uh, read from so i can yes so I, what i can do is i can say um yeah so let's do this i don't actually need to um because like normally what i would do is i would say uh, Tom is student and then I would instantiate a student and then I could encode student into a JSON But in fact what I really want is I want to have a reader which will read the you know the um, uh, The representation of Tom taken from the um, taken from the JSON string. So what I can say is that Tom is in fact a JSON string, which has a certain name, um, which is Tom, and it has a certain, um, yeah, I have to, sorry, I have to escape those. quotes h21 and oops and id is id 0 Okay, so I have Tom, which is a string, which is a properly formatted JSON string. I will have the reader, uh, and then instead of encoding it into the um, into a JSON, I will do the reverse. So I will say JSON new decoder um, r decode tom um, so i'm basically um, decoding tom into the um, yeah like a, a structure which then i can pass to my uh, post request. So what I will do is I will check if uh, OK is not well. It's error. If error is not nil, then we have a problem. Problem error. Creating the post request okay and then if it was correct what do I expect at the end well you know I expect the response code to be okay so if it is not HTTP status okay 
I have a problem, the test will fail. Um, we have this test before and we can copy and paste this. And then what else? Um, in fact, our response to post just says OK. Or if we adding a student which already exists, uh, says that I should use put, right? So if we go back to the logic, um, we have the post and we say, um, If we cannot uh, decode what we got, we say bad request. Uh, if if we um, if the ID already exists, we say bad request as well. So there are two cases which we have bad request response, bad request uh, status code, or um, if the post is empty, then all we also have a, a bad request, right? Uh, we can test all those all, all those use cases. So for example, we can um, test, uh, we can test this, but we can also test um, so testing Testing empty body. So if we say we have an empty body, then we expect status bad request. Okay, and then if the body is not empty, then we expect okay. Uh, we can also malform the we can malform uh, the JSON uh, and then we would ex expect bad request if it doesn't parse properly into a student, right? Uh, but let's skip the the um, so we have testing proper JSON body and then we would have to have a third test case when we testing improper test body. Uh, let's see this. Um, okay, there are some problems. We have some serious uh, panic happening. So in here, we are using the Yeah, so let's not do that. Um, let's wrap a string into a reader, right? That would be the easiest way of um, converting the string from here to a reader which is expected in the post. So let's go and check. So we say golang um, wrap string into reader. Okay. So let's see if we can do that from a string. In fact, there is a call new reader and we pass string to it. So that's the that's really all we need. Um, we need to say Tom. So new reader. And we pass Tom and it's in string. And let's check. This is inside inside package strings. So package strings provides us the call to new reader and it takes the uh, Tom. Um, so we have, we're not using IO, we're using strings. 
and uh, we basically parsing like converting the string into a reader um, so let's rerun the test almost there um, so we are expecting 200 we got 400 so something is malformed right um, if okay so if we have this error let's also print uh, expected this receive this uh, body let's print the body of the uh, response so we will have a little bit more okay so the body is Uh, it's a little bit hard to read from the body. Okay. Now we could say... Yeah, we could say... Okay, let's break this. Oh. Yeah, so let's all error. We take this oh. we disregard the error. We will assume this can do this. Okay, let's check. Yes, so we have um we basically um Right, so what happens is um, we have this global variable uh, which is called db and in the previous test we've added tom uh, with id 0 and now uh, like we've added it, we've added that student manually. So our global db in the global context contains tom um, and when we run the this test uh, and we try to add Tom uh, what happens is we getting the student already exists use put to modify and we getting 400 instead of 200 right so what we need to do is we need to clean um, we have to make sure that the global DB students is um, is basically uh, empty so we have to um, delete uh, the key, which is ID zero, which is the previous Tom that we had in the, um, yeah, in the previous test, this one. So we've added a student, uh, which was Tom with ID zero, and now we actually need to get rid of it. Um, if we do this, that's good, but it's... Um, so, yeah, let's run it. Okay, it works fine, but it would require us to remember what previous tests are doing with the, with the global state. Uh, so instead, perhaps what we can do is uh, we say golang map clean clear so we say okay how do can how can i clear the map 
So you you can delete all the keys from the map by iterating over the range, right? So instead of this one liner uh, where we know the ID, we probably should be doing something like this where we are a little bit more flexible and we always clean the um, the you know global DB. So let's have a function called clean. Uh, student DB uh, and this function will uh, basically clean the global state for us so then the order of tests of tests is not uh, important to us so this test uh, is um Okay, maybe what we can do is we can reinitialize the DB and that would, okay, let's try that. What if I reinitialize the ID, the DB and it's empty, right? So instead of removing what's been left there from before, we forcing it to reinitialize itself. Uh, sure, surely it you know successfully cleans up the DB. So um, this pattern is cleaner. So what it means is in the tests which do to touch the global variable, we just reinitialize it every single time in every test that requires that. Which which means then we from this moment on we know that database is empty, like the, the in memory storage is empty. Um, okay, uh, we can add, so in effect, we can add those two tests here as well, right? So one test is for the malformed um, um, JSON. So let's repeat this test here and say testing malformed JSON body and let's call it name e and ag. Uh, you know, it shouldn't properly parse into student, so it should respond with, um, so let's call it wrong Tom. Uh, and then we pass in wrong Tom here. And instead of student status okay, we sh expect bad request. Um, so we say bad request. Um, let's test this. Perfect. So it works. And we can also test um, with we adding Tom. And what happens if we add Tom twice? Right. So we have Tom. We've added Tom once and it said, okay, the Tom is added. Now, when we add Tom second time, um, trying to add Tom second time, what should happen is we should get bad request uh, because we should have already um, we should have already Tom in and we should say the system should say you shouldn't use post for a student which you already have. You should be using put instead, right? So let's test this. Uh, sure enough, it responds with bad request. So now we covered all the post test cases uh, and all our tests successfully run. So what's left is we go to our command line we say git status we see what has changed so api student and api student test are changed so we can commit so we can say git commit all uh, adding get and post test 
cases. Uh, we do this. Um, so git status should be clean. Uh, we have four commits pending. Uh, what we can do is we can um, also say go. Yeah, we can run the tests here to make sure that everything is really good. And you, you can say go vet uh, to check if there is something potentially misleading. So we see that uh, line 115 of API test. So let's let's check it. Uh, 115 is here. Um, and what it says is argument A for print verb S of wrong type. Um, so we shouldn't be using S if we're using a, an array, right? So what what should we use instead? Um, okay, let's check. Uh, Golang print modifiers and we will go string formatting and we have um, V representing kind of the, the structure or the value of, uh, of a struct, right? So what we can do is instead of saying S, we will say, say V and it's the same here and here. Okay, so now let's check go vet again. There is one more left uh, in 163. 163, same problem. We're using a struct and not a string, so we should use V. Uh, perfect, so let's do this. Um, 163 again. 163. Yes, because they are twice. Okay. Clean. So go vet gives us no problems. If we go lint, gives us no problems. Um, so we pretty much done. We git status again. We have one more. So git commit om fixing go vet warnings. All right, that's it. So I will push the changes to the repository and we have uh, a working module which demonstrates how to use the uh, JSON parsing back and forth, how to write tests for the server and the client sites and how to automate some of the manual testing that we've been doing before and how to properly organize the error codes for the uh, REST API. So that closes this uh, part of the tutorial. And um, in the next lesson, we will do some uh, debugging and some more advanced JSON parsing with uh, nested structures. Thank you very much.